Welcome back all you fit finders. As you can see, I'm at a new studio, new desk, new life, new me. Welcome back. And I'm guessing that everyone who's watching this is familiar with the brand Patagonia. But even if you've heard of their products and their clothing, I'm guessing you don't know the full story behind their brand, how they got established, and how they maintain product market fit, even at the expense of profits. So today we're gonna take a closer look at this clothing brand, see how they got started, how they aligned with their market and their market why and then use that to maintain a strong product market fit over time so let's unpack that So on this channel, we've talked a lot about notions around PM fit and how to measure it, but we haven't done a lot of real case studies. And so today we're gonna look at Patagonia as a real life case of a real business doing a product market fit model over time. Um, and if you're not aware, Patagonia is an outdoor clothing brand that has made a name for themselves with doing high quality and then establishing a very strong brand identity and a very big fan base, a very dedicated fan base that's really like, really dedicated to that identity. Um, and we're gonna talk today about how that identity that they've established is intrinsically tied to how they started their company and kind of that origin story. So you can really tell that Patagonia as a company understands the importance of their origin story and that company history because they have this whole page kind of dedicated to telling that story and starting from the very beginning with their founder, Charnar, uh, it's French, so I'm definitely saying that wrong my apologies but um, I'll do my best and how he started um, doing his climbing and starting making his own pitons and selling them just out of the back of his car to his friend before he started meeting up with Tom Frost and together they were redesigning a bunch of different types of climbing gear making it better making it better designed and selling that and making really a name for themselves but overall their whole business was started kind of around this basis of selling these pitons Petons um, and selling those and they kind of were the thing that launched the company and turned them into the largest supplier of climbing hardware in the United States and they're growing immensely because of it but they were actually seeing a lot of dissonance with their market because the petons they were selling would cause damage to the national monuments that all of these people are climbing and the founders knew that just like themselves the market that they were selling to was going out and climbing because they appreciated the natural beauty of the landscape and wanted to preserve it and wanted to see that beauty over time. And so the Petons causing the damage was creating this huge dissonance with their market and dissonance with themselves. And so even though it was like kind of the core of what they were selling and it was leading to huge profits, they pulled back on the Peton business. They stopped selling it and they stopped offering it in favor of keeping that alignment with their market and not selling something that was causing that much dissonance. And they didn't go back to selling something like it until they found a way to invent these chocks, which could be wedged in by hand and then not cause any damage. And so they found a way around it to offer the same service and and still meet that need of their customer, but they did it in a way that wasn't causing dissonance with their market and was staying true to the why, because they knew that both their company why and their market's why, and that driving factor, that driving motivator was the beauty of the landscape, and they just couldn't go on selling something that would damage that. It just went against the whole meaning that their company was founded on. Patagonia is one of those business cases where the business why and the customer why are very easily aligned because the type of people they're selling to have the same values that they as a company do, which is preserving that natural landscape. In, sec in fact, Charinard has said in interviews um, that it was his goal to climb without leaving a trace and that it used to be like you'd climb and you'd leave your mark on the land and leave things so that the next person would have it easier. And it was his goal to change that mentality and leave no trace as a climber. And so it's one of those cases where it in looking back, it is kind of a no-brainer to pull something that was causing damage. But at the same time, it was also a huge business risk to you know, reduce the sale of one of your biggest items. And so it's definitely something that takes a lot of courage to kind of carry out and hold that true to your why. And that's not just the case when it comes to their climbing gear. They do this several times when 
bringing out their clothing line and the Patagonia clothing line as well. So another example of them passing up an easy opportunity for more revenue for the sake of sticking closer to their why is this initiative that they ran literally called Don't Buy This Jacket. And it's so counterintuitive, but Patagonia, even though it's made very sustainably with recycled sources and they've done a lot to make it organic where they cut out the use of pesticides that were causing harm to the environment, um, they still have, you know, a certain amount of cost to make. And so kind of addressing that consumerism and also clothing waste and just overall waste issue head on by telling people that, you know, Patagonia is made sustainably, but it's also made to last. And if you own Patagonia clothes, we will help you repair them. And they actually have this whole worn wear repair wagon that they'll send around and we'll also reuse it. And so calling on their buyers who have the same values as them to recycle, reuse, uh, repair their clothing, and overall like use less and um, cause less waste, even if they trade in their own Patagonia, and Patagonia will sell those items again, um, all in the name of reducing waste and reducing environmental impact, even though that's got to cut in on profits because obviously the best way to make more money is to sell something new but by holding true to these core values they are gaining that dedication from their market who appreciates what they're doing and agrees with it overall just for a minute to put this all into perspective if you think about all of the companies who build a product with an intentional flaw so that it'll die in two to three years and you have to buy a new one and that's like how they rely on getting steady revenue versus patagonia is literally telling you not to buy new products and to continue using the one that's going to last forever. That's just such a difference with some of the other things you see happening um, in, in companies at their size. Obviously, a lot of these stories we're talking about are things that have happened in the past. So you might be thinking like, sure, back then Patagonia did this kind of thing, but you can see that they continue with this kind of strong, fast holding to their business why and that alignment with their market. First thing that you come onto their live site today is all of this like beautiful art for one thing. I freaking love this, but also a whole resolution about protecting nature. They have activism as its own tab. So obviously something that they're still going with. And then they also recognize the importance of storytelling and telling these stories that their company is based on. And it's kind of like their about tab, right? But if you go to a typical company's about tab, it just tells you, oh, we're all about this and this and this, and they just kind of say it. In Patagonia, they're really showing it because they're showing these narratives that are relevant to their buyers. Um, they're based in California. They have a lot of uh, history with surfing, so stuff like that, but then also a lot of stories about conservation and environmentalism. And so they really hold true to that in every element of their business, not just in one product or one business decision 10 years ago kind of thing. All of these business decisions are based on, you know, their core values as a company, but it's also also based on the research that they've done to understand their market and product market fit. And you know that they've done that research. They have this whole consumer profile even on one of their sites up here, the Patagonia brand audit. And then also other research that's been done on Patagonia customers show that, you know, they do make an effort to buy fair trade products. They care about where their products are coming from and where they're made from. Um, and also even compared to other, you know, outdoor brands, um, one of the top traits for Patagonia customers is conscientiousness and then agreeableness and sympathy and conscientiousness, dutifulness. And so they know that this is a high trending data point with their uh, market and they know that aligning with that is really important. Even when it means that they're going to get less revenue out of it, what they get back in dedicated product market fit and dedication from their customers is worth it. And I just want to say that what we actually covered in this video around Patagonia and some of the decisions they've made is honestly just the tip of the iceberg. So I highly encourage you to go and keep researching this topic yourself. I personally find it fascinating um, what they've done over the years and some of the bigger choices they've made and continue to make from donating a lot of their profits to environmental causes, um, taking things to court, and even um, stop selling co-branded fleeces to companies that didn't align with what their brand efforts were. Um, so it's all really fascinating stuff to continue to look into and all kind of supports this idea that to them, the business why and the core 
founding ideals that the company is based on is not just a slogan that they're gonna put on a page on their site. It is something that guides their brand decisions on a day-to-day -day basis, both internally with handling their employees and externally. And when you get down to that kind of alignment and um, staying true to core motivators, it can actually be much more complicated than it seems on, you know, than what it would seem on this video where it's pretty straightforward. And if you want to do more research on that, I'm going to put a blog post link in the description that goes through a lot of aligning with your customers, aligning those core motivating drivers um, and those whys. And I highly encourage you read it. It's a little bit of a long one, but it's really insightful on how you can do this in your own brand. The other thing we talked about a little bit in this video is how well Patagonia tells stories on their sites and really communicates those things because it wouldn't be as powerful of a message if they didn't, you know, put a lot of effort into communicating that well to their buyers. And so another thing I recommend here is there's some products that you can use to tell better stories on your site. And the one I recommend is Pulse Motive. It's an audio widget integration uh, product. It's a SaaS product that you can use with almost no coding, no coding uh, experience at all. Um, and allows you to kind of integrate a little bit of story and the power of the human voice on your website as well. So take a look at that if you're interested in how to really integrate narratives and stories onto your site, maybe in a little bit more affordable way if you don't have the kind of budget Patagonia does, but uh, that's my also recommendation. Okay, so those are all my personal plugs and recommendations for you for today, except of course, like the video and subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more. Um, and also leave me any comments of other brands that you think like Patagonia are doing a really good job of product market fit, whether by staying true to their why or in any other way, I'd love to take a look at those suggestions you have. And, uh, or just leave a comment and let me know how you like the new background. Green, really my color, is it working? Uh, <laughs> so if you have any thoughts for me, please reach out and uh, I'll see you in the next video.